Well, hey folks, it's your old pal, King Waspinator. Welcome back to Total Party Skills. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. I'm going to talk about something I haven't really brought up too much yet on my channel, and that's Call of Cthulhu, largely because I've never actually run it. Uh, one of my best memories of playing uh, role-playing games back when I was a teenager slash young adult uh, was a uh, one-shot Call of Cthulhu game uh, that a guy uh, was running. Uh, we're basically uh, playing uh, Kurt Douglas's character from The Ghost in the Darkness uh, that kind of just ended off all badass. So, you know, that we're on this boat on the coast of Africa and all these weird fish creatures are, you know, invading the boat and taking everyone down and there's like no way out and some giant dude covered in eyes comes up out of the ocean and is looming over the boat. So I just have my character do some like desperate suicidal badass moment thing of like, like I have some dynamite in my uh, equipment that came with the pre-generated character. So I take it, light it, grab, you know, put it in the character's mouth, jump in the water on some mad dash hope of blowing up this fucking eye dude. And even though there's no way in hell that would actually work, uh, like the, everyone like it was so like shocked that I had done that in the, in the play group. Uh, there was this like long moment of silence and the, the game master just decided to kind of roll with it and just have that, like cause uh, you know the the creature to disappear and you know the the sea monsters to retreat. Uh, so uh, and that always stuck with me as like one of my favorite you know experiences as a player. So I've always had a fondness for Call of Cthulhu and I have quite a few Call of Cthulhu books. You know I've in, in my private time I've you know uh, written up like you know outlines for like stuff set around Miskatonic University, kind of like sandboxy kind of stuff and uh, uh, some stuff for uh, the Morocco book they have. I'm I'm quite fond of to kind of uh, try to work, do some sort of uh, Call of Cthulhu, Casablanca uh, kind of uh, crossover kind of a thing. I never really finished that one. Uh, the thing that I did, though, uh, come up with uh, for Call of Cthulhu that I wanted to do and then Pandemic kind of ruined that whole plan was something I wanted to call Call of Cluthulhu, where I got a hold of the classic Clue box set and... Uh, some of these Call of Cthulhu cards they have on Amazon and probably, you know, other places. But, uh, you know, they, they got cards for different kind of weapons, characters, locations, and events. And kind of mix match them together to, uh, so you can use Clue as a template to run, like, some sort of, like, one-shot kind of uh, cl Clue slash Call of Cthulhu adventure on, like, Halloween or some other kind of holiday or just, you know do something with your players to kind of just change the pace every once in a while and take a break from your current game where basically you use this as your as your play map you base a whole little haunted mansion kind of thing going on you know contrive some reason while the characters are there uh you can uh, the cards come with a bunch of pre-generated uh characters that have their basic stats so you basically would just go through and match the ones that you like uh to you know the various uh, uh clue you know, roles of who's going to be Mrs. Plum and who's going to be, you know, Colonel Mustard and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, as characters you're like, are moving from room to room, you know, you can have uh, various, uh, event cards happen at randomly. So you can shuffle them and, and, you know, have it be kind of like a random occurrence. So that keeps you on your toes too, as a lore keeper while running the thing. Uh, although you, you kind of control it cause you're selecting what all is available in the decks that people get to choose from in the end. That's kind of a little bit of a sleight of hand kind of thing that goes into a lot of being a dungeon master from time to time. Uh, irregardless, you know, you can use all the pieces that come with it, you know, to mark what, you know, room the characters are in. And uh, part of the dynamic is to use the whole thing where just like in the Clue game, you know, one of the players is actually really secretly playing the role of the murderer. Um, you kind of bring in like maybe an element of John Carpenter's the thing and that like part of the mystery is that one of the player's characters is actually this alien being that's hiding amongst them that created, you know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the conundrum that you're going with. Uh, uh, the thing I was kind of running with with my outline was that it was going to be uh, one of the players is actually uh, someone who's had their brain removed and replaced by the brain of Amigo. Uh, who had then like murdered some professor and they, they, everyone's all you know stuck out there for kind of the basic clue movie premise blackmail reason kind of stuff going on the clue movie is also a, a good uh, touchstone to go to uh, just for some ideas uh, for how to like actually present the whole thing in play um, but just have a bit kind of like a mystery you know create paranoia between the players because uh, no one necessarily knows uh, you know who who is actually really who they say they are uh you know, you'll have different kind of encounters, you know, uh, in different kind of rooms, so you can bring in other kind of aspects of the setting. 
Uh, you don't have to get too much deep into the Elder Gods kind of stuff with it, it you know, especially since it's just kind of supposed to be designed to be kind of just like a fun one-shot thing to do with uh, Call of Cthulhu. But since I never really got a chance to do anything with it myself, and uh, I don't know, it's, it, it doesn't seem to lend itself well to online kind of stuff at all, I figure I could at least kind of like put the idea out there. There's no way to like copyright that. I, you know, as far as I know, Hasbro and the people at uh, uh, Chaosium like have nothing to do with each other. Uh, so, you know, it's not like there's ever going to be a branded Call of Cthulhu out there. So it's just kind of like a, you consider just a little bit of a hack that you can use on your own uh, just to do something fun as a one-shot. Take uh, your Call of Cthulhu lore book and then wrap it around Clue. Uh, especially if you want to do like a Call of Cthulhu kind of thing with family on a holiday kind of setting uh, without having to get too deep. Like I said, like if you, if you get the Call of Cthulhu uh, cards that they put out, not all of them are applicable, but, um, you know, with a, if, you, if you're selective about like, you know, what, what character options there are, like make specific, if, you're, if you want to be Mrs. Plum, you're going to be this person kind of thing. Just treat it as just like in the movie. Uh, you know, the Mrs. Plum, Colonel Mustard, those are all just like, you know, code names. That's not actually their real name. So the card character is, you know, like representing who the character really is. Uh, their, you know, their secret identity kind of stuff. Um, I, I feel a lot of it just because of if you, the, the more you incorporate the, the basic rules dynamics of the board game, it kind of allows it to float on its own a bit more uh, than it would uh, having to like, you know, uh, you know, craft a carefully, uh, you know, um, written, you know, outline for a real specific adventure. Or, you know, they, the fact that it's, they, as the random element puts uh, you as the lore master on your toes. So, you know, it's in, in, in that way, it's more possibly engaging and fun, especially as like just a one shot kind of thing. Uh, just to, you know, take a break from whatever it is you're normally doing. Or, you know, uh, you can, you know, wrap it into, like, a larger Call of Cthulhu campaign or use it as a way to start, you know, as a way for these characters, you know, to be together. Whoever, you know, ends up playing the weird, you know, guy with their brain replaced by an alien, uh, you know, they can either come up with a new character or you could try to somehow continue to roll with that and that one of the players is playing someone who's actually got an alien brain. Yeah, it, it, there's, you know, it's Cthulhu. Um... You could also, like, uh, if you get uh, the, uh, what was it, Mansions of Madness uh, uh, book, they have two different versions. They just put out a new one, but also the old one uh, for one of the earlier editions is still, you know, uh, full of perfectly good data um, to use, even you know, regardless of, you know, most of the editions of Call of Cthulhu don't seem to be that terribly different, you know, from each other in, in their operation. Um, but, you know, I don't know, since, like I said, since I've never really run it, I don't have that much really to say about it beyond, you know, like, I, g I generally like what it has to offer, even if you never run Call of Cthulhu, um, you know, there's lore and ideas to be pulled from it that you can incorporate into other games that have horror elements. Uh, I I've always found it weird that Lovecraft is, like, the one dude who, who seems to be, like, uncancelable. Like, you know, with the all the accusations, they get lobbied at people like Tolkien and J.K. Rowling and stuff. Like, Lovecraft is, like, pretty undeniably an ist. Uh, so, it's just strange that, uh, for some reason, like, his stuff still is allowed to be popular and published and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't know, maybe that in part, maybe also lends itself to part of why I've never really, really wanted to run it myself. I don't know. Um... Uh, I will say, like, of their source books and such that I have, uh... So the, the the two books that reformat the game the most, like Pulp Cthulhu and Dark Ages Cthulhu, I both you know uh, uh, kind of feel are superior to just the basic uh, Call of Cthulhu in and of itself. Uh, I do like the rule system. I especially like the way the characters advance without earning experience. It's just more that as they use their skills, their skills get better. I, I like that dynamic. Uh, it, it feels very organic and uh, and allows characters that start off you know, being formatted for one thing to kind of be able to lean into what they actually need to know as the game goes on. Um, I feel that, you know, like the modern uh, current edition uh, adventure and setting source books have some of the same problems that you can say about 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons and that uh, way too much emphasis is put on uh, like very like, you know, detailed outlined adventures uh, as opposed to, like, giving you a bunch of, like, juicy, you know, meaty information 
about the settings of cells. So whereas I would like to like the Berlin book and I would like to like the Reign of Terror because I like them both in concept, uh, uh, they're full of adventures that I like. I'm not necessarily interested in running myself. I'd rather come up with my own things to do in that if I were ever inclined so. So I find some of the older edition stuff that you can still uh, find on Amazon uh, for sale that's still you know, in new copies. Uh, like the the old Miskatonic University uh, book is a is a great uh, source book. Also, you know, since once again, since Strixhaven is such a buzzword lately, uh, you know, Miskatonic University like already gives you a a version of a fantasy magical uh, uh, university to go to that you know is undeniably uh, better than whatever it is that uh, Wizards of the Coast just put out. Um, I like their Morocco book. Uh, I like their book on New Orleans, although it's a bit too thin. Um, I mean, like I said, you could use Ma Mansions of Madness to incorporate it into uh, the whole Call of Cthulhu thing if you wanted to give more detail in the specific backstory uh, for, for the mansion that the, the Clue game is based in. But, uh, mm, I don't know. Uh, I myself, it's basically nothing but just adventure modules. So, like, that's generally not what I'm looking for in most games. Uh, so I, I guess that depends on like what you like out of your source books, whether or not that's one you'd want to uh, get into just, you know, f forewarned is forearmed as they say. But anyway, like I was saying, you know, uh, I think it would be entertaining and, uh, uh very customizable to just, you know, take Call of Cthulhu and jam it into a clue box set. Uh, you know, if you grab the Call of Cthulhu cards and just the basic Call of Cthulhu rule book. And the and the you know clue box uh, that's basically all you need uh, just to do that. It's, uh, you don't really need. You're not going to need the uh, you know player's handbook for Call of Cthulhu, Cthulhu since their basic rule book does something I like, which is it already has like all the same character creation rules and stuff, you know, from the main book in here anyway. Uh, so you know uh, you don't have to be constantly like having to grab you know your player's copy of uh, that they're using for reference you know at the table. To look things up because it's likely already in here anyway uh as, as just as a feature i like that and plus that means that if you're creative or not you know uh, wanting to like you know give people the entirety gigantic scope of uh of options found in like their the player's book uh you you can still run the game using just only the, the one book oh my god how rare uh also i you know i do like that they have the little bookmark thing i like it when books do that uh, in terms of modern trends, it's probably one of the better ones, but who knows how much it's adding to the cost of these motherfuckers. Which is why you can get Totally Party Skills books in print as soft covers and save some dough. The hard covers for the core books are there too, uh, if you want them, but uh, they're scaled in such that I'm making the same amount of money off each, and so that, that near $20 price difference, 15 to 20 bucks, uh, that's entirely based on what they're charging so that you could have a hardcover and like a lot of these things would probably sell better and uh have you know maybe uh, more people uh, willing to play them and look at them and try them out if they weren't 60 goddamn dollars a pop but hey that's just me but anyway so you get yourself a copy of the keeper will book uh clue box set you know it depends on which edition you're going for i, I went with the retro you know that's like maybe anywhere from like 15 to 30 bucks depending on how old it is or which which version you're going for and how popular it is uh and the cards or i want to say were like around 20 bucks so you know you're looking at around you know somewhere around a hundred dollars possibly uh but you know consider what you, you'd pay for pay-per-view to have a bunch of people watch a fight or you know if you were to take the whole family out to watch spider-man toby mcguire and andrew garfield way home uh, and, you know, add in all the food and accoutrement that comes with doing anything like that, you're going to get at least one evening's worth of entertainment out of this, if not more, because, you know, it's, it's since it's so kind of variable and the, the mystery of who, you know, ends up being the monster uh, paranoia angle would make for, like, very different experiences if you play it with different people. So, you know, I feel like, you know, uh, there's something to be mined out of here. And uh, why not you, if not me? Anyway, I guess that's about it. Uh, about all I really have to offer on Call of Cthulhu. Hope you enjoy. Stay waspinated.